Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Testy Tuesday. Grab that cup of joe and swirl it on down. Clear out your brain because, hey, hey, we got a good one for you today. I think you'll get this, but I just want to say one thing about it. It's from the Old Testament. So I'm going to be asking you about one of the books of the Old Testament. And it's the shortest reading you will ever see in the entire lectionary. Two verses long. That's it. So quick, sign up real quick to read the lessons this week if no one else has. All right. Um, yeah, two verses long. Oh, how should I go about this? Okay. It's, I don't want to give it away by telling you what it is right now. But in essence, these two verses tell us, and I'll say this in the vernacular, don't be a jerk, okay? Just don't be a jerk. Um, so, who says this in just two verses? Is it found in the book of Job? Is it found in Proverbs? Is it found in the book of Sirach? Is it found in Ecclesiastes? Yeah, you probably got it. It's one of those things that's found in the book of Proverbs. He doesn't use the word jerk, but what he does say is, hey, don't make your out, yourself out to be someone that you're not. And then end up putting your foot in your mouth and looking like a real fool. You see a lot of that in the book of Proverbs, the difference between being wise and being foolish. And this is one of those times that you could literally be very foolish. Now, let's look over some of these things. The book of Job, yeah, that, that's part of what's called the wisdom literature of the Old Testament. We have Job, some of the Psalms are classified as wisdom literature. The whole book of Proverbs, uh, the Song of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes. But I also mentioned this book, Sirach. What's that? Well, the, the technical... Uh, full title of that book is The Wisdom of Jesus, Son of Sirach. Not Jesus of Nazareth, but Jesus, also Joshua. Remember, those are the same words. Uh, Joshua is the Hebrew form of Jesus. So the wisdom of, if you want to say Joshua, Son of Sirach, that's found in our Apocrypha, the hidden books of the Old Testament. Ones that aren't part of our canon, but are included in there for our use and well and there's a lot of good things because that is also the alternate reading one of the two alternate readings that we have for this coming sunday for the older testament you could use the one that's from sirach which basically talks about pride not being a good thing the unhealthy kind of pride not i feel good about myself and i'm going to make something and i'm going to go out there and conquer the world but I'm better than everyone else, you know, that kind of pride. But here's our our verses from Proverbs 25, verses 6, and the first part of, of verse 7. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. Uh, okay, see, there's a lot of that kind of talk in the book of Proverbs because the book of Proverbs really doesn't get to those big, gigantic questions that are found throughout much of the rest of Scripture. Questions such as, who am I? You know, those existential questions I get. And what's my purpose in life? Um, who is God? How does God relate to me in the world? Who created this world? The really big theological questions. Now, these are more the more mundane. How do you live your life? How do you live the good life in particular? And how do you be wise about it and not foolish? You find that that's the sort of thing you find in um, wisdom literature all over the place. I read a really good example of how you can describe wisdom literature, especially the book of Proverbs. Uh, you remember the good old days when you would take out your camera, take a picture, then you had to send the film off to be developed, and you got all these little, uh, you know, photographs back, and you sit around as a family, and you pass them back and forth and look at your roll of 20 or 30 or whatever you had, uh, and then you took those pictures when you were all done, you went over to the china closet, and there in the top drawer, you'd open up, toss them in there, 
throw them away. You didn't throw them away, just close the drawer and forget about them. And then, you know, a little bit later, he took some more pictures, did the same thing again and again and again. Pretty soon, they're all mixed up in that drawer. That's what the book of Proverbs kind of seems like. A bunch of mixed up sayings that you just go there, you pull them out, but you treasure them. You treasure them. And that's what we have going on in this 25th chapter. Uh, there's a, they're called the uh, Proverbs of Solomon. They could have been written by Solomon, or at least in his tradition they were written. And this seems to be a little gem that's spoken to some of the young men who are preparing to be a part of the royal court. So when you're in the presence of the king, don't make a fool of yourself by sitting in the best place, you know, taking your seat at the table before you're told, oh, you're sitting here, you're sitting there. No, just wait. Be called up. Be esteemed by the king or whatever nobility you're working for. Just don't assume that you're better than everyone else in that room. Uh, you might say, okay, but what's that doing as our Old Testament reading? Uh-huh. When you get to our gospel lesson for this coming Sunday, you have Jesus basically saying the same thing after he talks about coming to a banquet and sitting at the front of the, of the whole rest of the um, people that are invited there and being told by the host, hey, I have that seat for someone else. So you need to go sit back there. Yeah. But Jesus says those things all over the place. The humble will be exalted. Those who are high and lofty will be humbled. The first shall be last. The last shall be first. And it's, I think, it, it's like that all over the Bible. It talks about how pride ruins us. That that kind of pride that I mentioned earlier that really puts yourself ahead of everyone else and expects them to serve you instead of you serving them. And what did Jesus exhibit all through his life? He came not to be served, but to serve. Not be served, to serve. And the Apostle Paul, I think when he took that little Christian hymn that was circulating and, and put it into his letter to the Philippians, said it so wonderfully when he talked about Jesus humbling himself even to the point of death, death on the cross. And therefore, God has now highly exalted him. And he sits at God's right hand. So, yep. A real short passage that we have here in the book of Proverbs. And you might just say, yeah, what are we reading that for for Sunday? Uh, it's for those people who just want a real short passage to read if they're the lectors for the day. That's why. No, it's because it is something that's found all through Scripture that's worthwhile. And it's a gem that you can chew on and keep chewing on all day long as you ask yourself, how am I being a servant to others? Am I truly humbling myself for the sake of the kingdom? Am I being a servant or am I out to be served? Hmm. Good things to think about. God's blessings be with you on this Testy Tuesday.